Hi, this is Wilma and I'm just so happy that you're joining me for this art journaling video. And if you're watching live with me, um, well not live, but with, with me, then um, please chat to me, talk to me, tell me where you're from and any questions that you have. I just love to connect and I think more than ever connection in this time is just so important. So I am, as you can see behind me, the side, I am actually um, making more uh, pages, more videos, and those will be up in the same way. I don't, just don't know when. I don't want to plan ahead. I just like to more go with the flow and enjoy the process for myself as well. Okay, so today um, I'm going to show you how to make this page. And it's the second page in our spring series. It's our journal page 35. <laughs> and and if you missed it, this is the first one we did. And this one, uh, the video is on my YouTube channel uh, already. So I hope you enjoy it and welcome again. And I just wanted to say hi and talk to me. Bye. Well, now at least you know how I look and that I'm a true blonde. <laughs> because in this stage, you know, if you're not a blonde, it shows. Anyway, I... Um, I'm actually gray. Okay. Um, first of all, we are going to prep our page and I'm using Strathmore Mixed Media books and uh, hardcover books and the link is in the description in below. And I'm using Liquid Text Gesso and I'm just going to prep my page. So I'm using a card, any type of gift card type of thing will work. And you just want to spread the gesso layer thin on your page and just as a reminder we are doing this this to form a little barrier between the paper which is quite porous and the media so it just helps that the media don't seep in the paper and and come out the other side so it's just that little bit of a barrier I also try to make my gesso as smooth as possible and I say gesso I know it's probably pronounced gesso but uh, I I don't know I'm too old to change my ways right now <laughs> so okay so once this is done you can actually continue right away because it dries so quickly you know and you don't have to wait very long for it to dry because it's so thin. So for this page, I start every page in this little series with uh, black paint. And I'm using blackboard paint. It's a Martha Stewart brand. And I'm just going to paint it. So on this note, I just want to say that I, I created a workshop, an uh, art journaling workshop um, you can find a description of it in, at the end of this video in the final few seconds. I will have the link there uh, that I called Starting Points. So Starting Points is an original workshop and it's on sale right now. I just marked it down quite a bit. And it's about just starting. And and the whole premise of this work, that workshop is how the blank page intimidates us right and so I'm using different starting points in the video which breaks it down makes it easy for you just to start on your art journals and for me in this video and in the other ones that I'm making in this little series my starting point is black so in the previous one I used watercolors and in this one I'm using the black chalk paint it's basically an acrylic paint, so I don't find it chalkier than normal acrylic paint. And when you see when I actually paint with acrylic paint, it looks very much the same. So that's just a little side note. Um, so if you don't have chalk paint, you can use any paint. Right, and next up I'm doing the second part of what I'm duplicating in all the videos it's collage so I have a little six by six paper pad from Maggie Holmes crate paper and I'm just tearing it up 
and I'm just going to stick it down with Mod Podge. And again, I have no idea where this page is going. I I don't plan it out. Um, I know what I want to use. And this is actually the biggest joy in art journaling for me is when you can set some parameters or restrictions and you just have to make work within it. And it's a very interesting experiment to see what you come up with. So in all the videos, I'm doing the same thing. I'm using a black background. I'm using collage. I'm using the same stencils at least one of them on each video and just to see where it ends up it's such an adventure you know and um, again reminding you that art journaling is exercises in creativity and no matter if your page is the biggest disaster um, ever <laughs> which has happened to me um, that creativity is not wasted. It goes into a creative vortex and or a store or a, a mind um, uh, consciousness, you can almost say. And it just lingers there and it will come out at some point. And so no amount of creativity is wasted. So you and you can't use up your creativity. So this is the one thing. That probably surprises me the most on a continuing basis for the last 20 years is where does it come from? Like all the ideas, the, you know, the, the pro projects, the products, the paintings, the art journals, the illustrations. I'm just surprised that it, it just wouldn't dry up. The, and that's when I realized finally, you know what, creativity is is something that's like a wellspring within us. So next up, I'm using gelatos. And these are wonderful, wonderful little tools. They look like oil, oil pastels. They look like wax crayons, but they're water-based. So what I'm doing is I'm just coloring with them. And you you can see the, there's a little knob you have to turn at the back to add more pigment and I'm just coloring with them and I'm using uh, this lovely orange pink and a little bit of yellow on some of the pages and I'm just enjoying this so much so what you do with them is you add a touch of water to them and that's how you make them flow but it's also almost like how you set them so that they don't rub off on your on your work so don't be too worried about it I've used them a lot of times and they don't really smudge unless you intentionally drag your finger over it but you should be using a clean brush don't do what I do do what I say <laughs> and um, yeah my water is not clean but anyway, so now I'm just adding a little bit of water to each, um, to the brush. And then I'm just lightly painting over the gelatos. And you can see how it's just getting very opaque, but yet transparent. But I mean, it's just a beautiful way and to, to add more texture and color to your page. So my brush is fairly wet. It should be with clean water because otherwise the colors becomes too muddied and you don't want that to happen or become, not becomes. And now I I didn't really want to like cover up all that pretty paper. So I'm using a baby wipe and I'm just wiping away a little bit of it. Spoiler alert, it didn't really help because in the end you don't see it anyway but at this stage I, ju I just wanted to have the pretty pink paper show up and now I'm just going to color with a light pink and I actually wanted to see how it shows up on a dark background and it's actually it it shows up it doesn't um completely um disappear in on the black background and again I'm just going to um, 
So there you can see when you smudge it with your finger, um, it's it feels a lot like oils. It really does. So it's just a lot of fun. Little finger painting. And now I'm just going to do my mono printing. So Okay, I'm using a transparency. This is the one that I used on the previous video. And I'm just blending in a little bit of the lime green or the vivid green with it. And I love the transition happening there. I'm using phylocyanine green here. And I'm just using a roller or a brayer. And I'm just like blending the paint a little. And I'm going to um, print with it. I'm going to try making marks. I'm not very efficient in mono printing, so please don't judge me. I am still learning and figuring out what work with what I have. I think ideally you have a jelly plate, but I don't have it. So I'm just using a transparency or acetate film. And I'm just going to press it down and... To me, it's just about adding color and making marks and texture. And I love the printed look of it, right? So that's one thing that I love. So that is absolutely beautiful. This is, I love, love, love it. Look at the texture. And I mean, you can make any kind of marks on the transparency to have, you know, you can do pluses, you can do any kind of marks with that. So... And now I'm just doing, uh, I'm adding a light molding paste and I'm pushing it through a stencil with a palette knife or a icing tool. <laughs> this is one that my friend Louise gave me all the way from Australia. So if there's any people from Australia watching, hello. And I love, love, love your country. And now you just want to let it dry. And now the fun is going to start. It's true because I always think up until this point that my page is going to be at a disaster. Every single time. I'm like, I don't think it come, can come back <laughs> from the edge. And then it does, right? So I hope you're drinking tea or coffee with me or wine if you're in a one o'clock time zone. Um... And now we're just going to start. So this is the illustration I'm going to use. And you can just look at the top left hand, no, top right hand corner of the screen. There's a little um, image. And if you click on that little eye, it will take you to iHeart Studio. Right, so I'm going to use Cerulean Blue Acrylic Ink, Liquitex Cerulean Blue. And I'm just going to drip a few drops on my page. I have clean water and my favorite brush, which uh, unfortunately paint dried on it, which is the story of my life. I'm the worst person in the world when it comes to brushes. And that's why I don't buy expensive brushes. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water to my brush and I'm just going to paint over the cerulean blue and I'm just going to dab uh, my brush on a few points where I press and hold and then to make a few runs of the water paint and then I just want to let it dry and this just freshens up the page already a lot of the, a lot so one thing that I realized after this page was done is how much I'm using complementary colors on it so I'm going to be using blue and yellow and I'm going to be using orange which you can see there in the background and purple so that wasn't intentional but looking back I found that I used a lot of complementary colors once that is dry we're going to use our stencil that I created for this little project this little series Again, just look at the top right hand corner, you'll see the little image and if you click in that area, it will take you to the free download. Okay, for this one I'm using Martha Stewart spray paint in yellow. And honestly, this is, I wanted to use a different color, but yellow was the only light color and I didn't want to use black. So I'm, 
I'm always, I was bound by what I had. Now I'm just spritzing a little bit of paint through my stencil and I'm using the back of a paintbrush just to hold down the stencil because you don't want to get your hands in there because it might just spray your hands and we all know how hard it is to get spray paint off your skin and you know what this stencil is actually very versatile you can place it and spray it and move it and place it and spray it and create your flourishes however you want them to be and already I'm loving this look I'm enjoying the fact that the stencil is not totally flush so it gets a little spray off like it just softens the edges at some points which I love and and also remember that um, it's actually best to do this outside but it's too cold in Canada and also I can't film outside so I had to suffer the fumes which is okay and then I'm just going to add a tiny bit more but I'm just using like a couple of spritzes so it's not a lot of paint that you spray a little tip if your paint um, spray paint nozzles get clogged take them off and just pop them into a little cup with Windex window cleaner and just let them soak for a little bit and that helps I found so the next step is I'm using a almost empty bottle of white acrylic ink and I'm just adding some conacridone magenta to it and I'm just going to blend it in to make a beautiful, my favorite pink, but you should know that by now. And I'm going to just write on my page with this ink. So I'm going to keep that little pink bottle of ink and I painted the outside of it quickly so that I know it's pink and I, I'll probably use it again. And now I'm using my favorite brush, which I can't tell you what it is. Probably a cheap brush, but just the way the bristles formed. It just makes it the perfect calligraphy brush for me. And I'm just going to write on my page. And the first person that can tell me where this lyrics is from um, gets a high five from me. But you have to do it right now in the chat. <laughs> um, I just picked a song and I just decided to just write a little bit of words on it. And this is the text part of my, not my journaling part, but the text part of the page. And I love adding text and I use it more for texture than for 
anything else, you know. Um, so I just absolutely love it. And it takes a little bit of practice. Not hours, Suze. Suze said it, she practiced for hours to write like this. <laughs> but you just have to do it maybe consistently. And it's a whole different story to to actually write with a um, to write with a paintbrush, you know. So that is, I'm just painting the outside of the bottle with a little bit of pink, so I know it's not white. It's a different story to teach yourself to write with a paintbrush. Okay, and now I'm just adding a little bit of the deep violet paint, and this is also a very beautiful color. And this the purple that I was talking about that once you, you know, it's a complementary to the yellow. So lots of complementary colors on this page, maybe not the best. I don't know, I, I usually don't use that many. And this is just for a little drama. I love, love, love adding drama to my page. And usually drama to me is contrast. So again, you can see how the paint... The spray paint resists the um, the wash that I'm putting over it. And that's also part of the charm for me. And it's just amazing the difference that little bit of purple does. Again, with acrylic paint or the acrylic inks that I wrote with, you can see even if I paint over it, it doesn't smudge, which is phenomenal. It's just a stunning, stunning product to use. And... I would say if you love working in layers like I do, then the acrylic inks is your absolute best, best friend and best buy that you can do for art journaling because the acrylic ink is acrylic based. Now I'm using some gold acrylic ink and I'm just going to paint my leaves a little bit. I decided that I was actually sorry that I didn't have gold spray paint. That would have been like amazing. But I don't have any gold spray paint. Um, so I'm just going to paint some details on the leaves with gold acrylic ink. And the, you know what? The spray paint resisted the ink a little bit, but you can still see it. So it's not a big deal. Okay, and I'm just speeding my video up here a little bit. Um, I actually like the little bit of resist um, that's happening when you paint on those yellow leaves. And it's a very subtle detail, you know, it's not very, you, it's not that you can see it like from far away. You have to get really close to see it. And now I'm just going to add my illustration with Mod Podge but just make sure that all the media is completely dry otherwise when you when you stick your illustration down with Mod Podge it will smudge and you will get everything messy and that's what you don't want so um, I'm just going to just wait till it's completely dry and then I'm just going to add Mod Podge to it but first of all I want to I was thinking right here, okay, I, I want to add more drama to this and I wanted to do it in black because that's just, so I took out the black gelato and now the fun starts. So I'm just going to color around the edges a little bit and almost frame it with the black. You can see my frame is not very white, it's very messy. So and um, some parts I'm adding more black and in others a little less but I'm this is lovely I'm loving this so I'm just drawing around it very carefully and then maybe a little bit more in some spots you know and I will be painting over it also with water just to seal it almost, let it and set it and so right now I can start seeing how this page is coming together and I'm loving it. It's something really different. 
well, it maybe looked the same than my other um, art journals, but the process felt a lot different for me. Maybe it's the collage, I don't know, maybe it's all the layers. I try to work a little bit more minimalistic usually, but I'm loving the complexity of what I'm doing now and it's fine. Again, if you think about it, it's just exercises in creativity. Another little note, because the text that I wrote, that song title, the song lyrics, is just um, texture to me. I'm not very um, attached to the actual words, so I don't mind painting over it, you know. So that's just a little side note there. And I'm painting with a wet brush and I'm actually bringing it in at some points, you know. But then there's a part of me that love, love, love the roughness of the of the crayon itself. And I didn't want to cover everything up there. Okay, now I'm at that point where I'm looking at my page and I'm like, I need calm. I need a piece of calmness. So I'm taking the little roller, little mini brayer, and I'm just white acrylic paint mixed in with a little bit of the conacridome pink and and I'm just going to roll it um, on my page just to create a little bit of calm so I don't want to do it everywhere so I'm just using a little paper to mask you know a part of my page so I don't make a mess everywhere And again with the roller, what I like about it is you'll see in a minute when I start working a little bit more, it it becomes a little bit more transparent. So there's a lot of paint on there right now. But and I also like the graphic look of it. So I truly do love using rollers a lot or brayers, however you wanna say it, and then just using your finger to get into the little nooks there and then I'm just going to add a tiny bit more on that side that's that's almost it so now it starts looking um, you know I, I like that calm area that I added and that is for my journaling as well so now I'm going to cut my illustration and I'm going to just Add Mod Podge to the back of it and I'm just going to stick it down carefully. Right, so I did cut my illustration because otherwise my book won't close and I always want to put it in that third, um, you know, two thirds of the illustration on one side and just a little bit on the other side. And I'm also, so that's the reason why I cut it. If you don't have Mod Podge, you can use matte medium or medium gloss. So any medium you can use. My advice will be just to spray the back of it. Okay, now I want to add some texture in black, but I don't have black spray paint. So I decided to make my own spray paint. So I have a little um, spray bottle. And I'm just going to add a few drops of black acrylic ink to it. And voila, I made my own acrylic ink spray. So, but my plan is to buy some black spray paint. I just didn't have any left. So just be careful because the spray off of these little bottles are quite severe. <laughs> so I, I should have covered more of my page. It's okay. It didn't make a big mess but my aim wasn't quite there and you can see the difference that makes hey and so I added just a little bit to that side as well and voila all done but now you can see the those little dots that I sprayed are way too um, even so I'm just going to use paint and just paint them away some parts of it and then I'm going to do my journaling so yeah, you just want to make sure it's dry. And I'm just using the same paint that I rolled with and I'm just going to quickly paint some of the black markings away. And that's the joy of using very opaque 
acrylic paint like the heavy body acrylic white and even the little dots and actually here when I painted over it it didn't co cover it completely but that was fine I like that a lot and now you just want to let it dry actually it has to sit for a whole um, day before you write on it but of course I'm always in a hurry oh and just a little bit more detail just with the paint dripper and that beautiful cerulean, cerulean blue sorry and I just wanted to repeat that color you know um, maybe also the contrast of the yellow leaves on the one side and the little line drawing of blue leaves on the other side is really beautiful to me I like it um, so this is basically a done page um, now you just want to let it dry completely and then do your journaling that's my advice I used two phrases from Tim Holtz has little sayings and I'm just sticking it down there and the camera will focus in a second and now I'm just going to add my journaling but again it was a struggle to find the right pen because the paint was a little thick and not dry to it was dry to the touch but not completely dry so I struggled a little to find the right pen and in the end I used um, this this is still a pen uh, Becky Higgins um, that she brought out for her uh, day you know her project life I still have a bunch of them and I just took it out and used it I'm writing Psalm 131 and I love 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 it to me it's just one of those psalms that is perfect for a time like we're in now and Psalm 131 reading from the Passion Translation says Lord my heart is meek before you. I don't consider myself better than others. I'm content to not pursue matters that are over my head, such as your complex mysteries and wonders that I'm not yet ready to understand. I am humbled and quieted in your presence. Like a contented child who rests in its mother's lap, I'm your resting child and my soul is content in you. O people of God, your time has come to quietly trust, waiting upon the Lord now and forever. I just absolutely love it. It's so comforting knowing that there are some things that we just do not have control over and that we can just relax and rest knowing that we have a Father who loves us, who takes care of us. So I'm just speeding the video up, of course, and I do use my iPhone, my Bible app, just to write it's easier for reference and I also use a ruler to keep my my font straight and even if I just use one line in the middle of what I'm writing it just keeps the rest of it straight I can write fairly straight because of practice that's all people just practice <laughs> okay and um, so I'm done it's just a little bit of journaling on this one and then I'm going to just finish up. And this is the last touch on it. You know, I am going to stamp the date. Um, and I like to lately just to date my pages because I find that when I go through my, my journals, I'm actually sad that I don't know which years I created the pages in. And also my journals are getting full. I think I want to do a journal walkthrough maybe one day and just go through my journals and just show you, you know, I have four of them. So I've quite a few original pages that has been created and um, I just love, 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 love this project. So just think about it as your sketchbooks. Okay, we're done. We're done. You can see I painted the Amen. And I'll show you a little bit of the detail once I get my manual focus right. So it's a very interesting layered page. 
and I love it actually I do I like that even under the white you can still still see some of the texture and the paper and the everything that came through the stencil that I used for the flowers is by Prima I don't know if you can get it but I do link some stencils in my description so you can find maybe a rose stencil by Tim Holtz that will work thank you so much for hanging out with me for chatting with me for watching the the video with me and I'm definitely going to premiere another one I have two more to go and we'll do the same thing so come and hang out with me again and also when you make your pages tag me on Instagram Wilna Furstenberg and you can just I would love to see your pages and show them to my followers and just celebrate the art of your heart as well okay bye